Hello my friends, so today we're actually going to be talking about how to edit and smooth out skin and do some basic retouching on, on a photo in iPad. You can do the same exact thing that you can do on Photoshop on an iPad, as long as you have an iPad Pro. Uh, now it doesn't matter if you have the newer generation of the iPad Pro or the older generation of the iPad Pro from last year or the year before last, as long as you have an iPad Pro and an Apple Pencil. Um, and the software called Affinity Photo, which is basically similar to Photoshop, does almost the exact same thing as Photoshop, but they've actually translated that app to iPad. It's been totally optimized and it works exactly the same way. Um, you can actually do it on, on Affinity Photo on iPad. Uh, so for me personally, I actually edit primarily on iPad. Uh, I don't really use Photoshop a lot. I did learn on Photoshop, so I, I'm technically trained on how to use Photoshop, but Affinity Photo is literally the exact same thing. So today we're gonna to be really going through this image that's here on screen. Um, we're gonna be focusing just on the face. So let me zoom in right now. We're gonna be basically smoothing out this area of the face. This is the final image um, after about six or seven minutes of just the technique that we're gonna to cover today. Um, and then this is the original image right here. So if I zoom in, you can see all these blemishes. I will zoom into some of those blemishes that we're going to actually remove with a simple tool that you can actually find in Photoshop or Affinity Photo on iPad. So that's exactly what we're gonna be covering. Um, and we're gonna be smoothing out all of that content to get rid of all those blemishes there on the face. So let's jump over into Affinity Photo right now and we can get started. So here's the photo in Affinity Photo. So first things first, um, default setup, I literally just loaded the photo into the program. That is all I've done. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is tap right here, new pixel layer. Uh, we're going to make that a blank pixel layer. Um, the blend mode is going to be normal. And then we're going to go over into this side over here and we're going to tap right here and we're going to be using the uh, in painting brush. So the in painting brush is basically, basically the same exact thing as the spot healing brush in Photoshop. Um, Affinity Photo has changed their algorithm so it functions a little bit differently. I don't know all the technical jazz behind the difference between the spot healing brush and the in painting brush, but as far as functionality when it comes to retouching skin and what we're gonna be doing today, they function the exact same way. Um, this tool is really bad when it comes to edges. Ideally, you wanna make sure that this tool is set to the, the settings that are on screen right now. So a, a medium size width, oh Jesus, I actually just, I, I set it to go. Um, but you wanna make sure the brush is set to a medium, smaller kind of width. So somewhere between 10 to 50 pixels, opacity 100, flow at 100%, hardness, I'm actually gonna put that to 100%. Um, the hardness is something I'm gonna modulate and, and kind of change as I, as I do retouching. Um, for the most part, if you want a lot of texture, keep the hardness at 100%. If you don't want a lot of texture and you're working mostly on the tone um, or color in a blemish, at that point, it makes more sense to move the hardness down over to 50%, 20%, 0%, depending on how soft you want the, the replacement of the, the surrounding skin after you brush and you do a stroke over, how soft you want that to actually blend in. Um, that's really what the hardness is controlling. For the most part, I leave it at 100%. Um, and then if I'm working a little bit more on color and uh, more of a tone kind of issue, if I'm just doing only this technique, then I will change it to below 50%. Um, but like I said, mentioned before, this tool is really, really bad when it comes to edges. Uh, but we are just going to, we're going to, on this uh, blank layer right here, we're going to just do all of our editing. So to do that, you actually need to change the source of the tool to current and below so that it actually samples uh, both this pixel, this uh, both of these layers right here that I'm tapping. Um, but as far as settings, though, those are kind of the settings. I just use a, a, a pretty small uh, um, brush size, usually about 10 to 15, maybe 20 pixels, and the opacity 100, full 100, hardness 100%, current and blur below. Um, this was supposed to set to default. I don't know what happened, why the moir changed, but uh, you can just ignore that. It's just the default hard brush that you find right here. That's all we're gonna do. So it's 11.17 right now. We are gonna spend basically six or seven minutes and we'll see how far we can get. Uh, you can literally in 10 minutes do a whole photo with this technique. I mean, it's super freaking easy. Uh, it's one tool, you don't need to change tools. You don't have to change a lot of settings. You just like tap away at it and you zoom in so you're nice and close. 
and that's it. You know, it was super freaking easy. Um, this is definitely the way I was retouching photos for a really long time. But uh, so 11, 18, we're just gonna spend the next six, six minutes and see how far we get. Um, so I will kind of give you guys some talking points as I go along. The brush right now was way too big. So we're gonna kind of zoom in a little bit more, even still a little bit too big. But literally all you're doing with the end painting or AKA the spot healing tool, same thing. The spot healing tool is just what it's called in Photoshop. In painting is what it call, it's called in Affinity. You are literally just, um, with every brush stroke, it's going to sample, sample all the neighboring pixels and then analyze texture, tone, and color uh, of the surrounding pixels and then basically use an algorithm to um, blend is, is literally what, what it's doing based on the flow that you have set and the, uh, the hardness that you've set. So since I'm, I'm not really doing anything that needs a lot of softness as far as edges, um, I'm working primarily on just blemishes. And I'm not, some of this stuff has some color as well and some tone issues, but uh, for the most part, leaving it 100% and just, just doing exactly what I'm doing right now will get you probably about 90 to 95% of the way in your, in your skin smoothing um, and your basic retouchings, which is literally what we're doing. Now, this is the technique, like I had said before, is, is kind of the technique I had used for a very long time when I first started um, doing fashion and beauty and editorial work. Um, and and I, since my medium was primarily posting on, online and I wasn't doing a lot of prints back in those days, it didn't really matter that I, I wasn't able to edit uh, basically the raw image. This is just a JPEG that I exported from Photoshop with uh, with a resampling um, setting in, in Photoshop and, and the high resolution. Uh, so it's not gonna be the same resolution that you'd see in if you're editing the same image on Photoshop. Uh, I just posted a tutorial on how to do this same technique in Photoshop. You can see the differences in, in terms of quality uh, between both videos if you'd like a comparison, but uh, it's not nearly as, it's, it's not nearly from a quality standpoint, it's not nearly as good. It's really just not as good. But if you're just posting on Instagram, I mean, dude, you're editing on iPad. What you see on iPad is literally what you're gonna get on iPhone, regardless of what model it is. Granted, the color, there might be some color differences between every iPhone out there. Um, but for the most part, what you're seeing on these devices is what you're gonna get across all of the devices. Um, iPhone and, and just the app, uh, Apple, I guess, ecosystem overall, is pretty good when it comes to consistency of, of how it displays images when it comes to web format. So um, what you're seeing right here is literally what you're gonna get on Instagram and how it's gonna translate across all devices. Uh, so we're at 11.20, that's just two minutes. And we'll just kind of go back over here a little bit. Um, for the most part, I'm just leaving the brush size the same. As I zoom in and out, I will change the brush size. Like for this, this bigger blemish right here, I'll kind of change that may actually drop the hardness down and make it a little bit bigger, just soften up this entire area. Um, make sure it's not doing anything funky. One of the things with this tool, you don't, as, as you go over multiple areas, it starts to get really funky in terms of its results. So ideally you wanna just go over it once and then just kind of see it's, I'm not really liking the way it did that. I might just use a harder, harder. Uh, yeah, I'm not really liking that. It's just, the tool, went, as you get bigger in terms of size, it starts to get really weird in the sampling. It's not really the greatest on, on that front. You're probably better off using other tools that we'll talk about in uh, future YouTube videos, for example, the patch tool or the healing brush, um, or just dodging and burning, um, to be honest with you. But uh, for the sake of this video, we're just gonna keep on using this tool and just basically see how far we can get with just this one tool with basic settings here. I'm not even really changing the settings. We're still at the same settings I talked about before. Um, capacity 100%, flow 100%, that, all, all that jazz. Nothing really revolutionary there. Um, it's really good at removing hairs, really no problem. It does get a little bit blurry and it's not great when it comes to edges. Still at about 14 pixels. Don't really need to change the size all that much. Um, but as you use this tool more and more, if it, this is gonna be one of the default tools you guys kind of use just to get a quick result in five minutes. So far we're at four minutes. Um, and uh, it's just, you, you can just kind of, you'll, you'll learn the intricacies of it and you'll kind of know when it's gonna give you a funky result. Um, but for the most part, just kind of just tap away and, and just kind of go ham and 
you don't even really need to be that careful um, especially since this image is going to be posted on Instagram it doesn't really matter that much people are not going to zoom in to those levels um, to really see a lot of this detail and you can also use sharpening tools and brushes to to enhance the detail where you want that detail to be enhanced um, but we're done. I mean, seriously, I, I really serious. I mean, this is a little funky right here. Um, that was a little funky. There's a little bit of color stuff down here too. So I'm not really totally jumping at. There's some texture stuff like kind of up here that the tool is not going to be able to handle. That's going to be a whole nother tool. But um, dude, I mean, we started at 18, five minutes. Guys, look at this thing. Look at this. Look at this. Let me zoom in. Look at this. Seriously, five minutes one tool i barely even changed the settings guys seriously look at this are you kidding me five minutes if i spent like another three or four minutes i'd be able to finish like all of all of this down here like all of this jazz over here i wouldn't be able to fix the whole shirt situation that's a whole nother tool but um and there's some other color issues with this photo but like that's literally it guys when it comes to basic spin skin skin smoothing um, with this specific technique. This one technique, this is what you can do in five minutes. I, I will show you guys some other techniques, both on, uh, in terms of Photoshop and Affinity Photo on, on iPad um, that are gonna give you different results that you know may use blurring, may use a variety of different tools. There's a lot of ways to do the same, the same process. Uh, my goal is really just kind of to show you each one of those individually so that you guys can ideally just be able to pick and choose whichever techniques that you personally like the most. Um, I use this technique personally. I don't use this technique quite to the levels that I'm showing you right now because uh, I do do frequency separation and I, I kind of altered my technique. This, But this is what I was doing for a long time on, on all my posts to be honest with you because it's just like if you zoom in far enough and you're like you're, you're zooming into this level and you make your, your brush size that big, I mean you can get to pixel detail. And you can get really, really, I mean, dude, you can get really, really nitpicky if you want to, to get rid of detail. Granted, at, after a certain point, it, it is going to get kind of blurry, which you can see right here. It's going to it's gonna get kind of blurry. You'll start to lose detail after a certain point. But, I mean, if you need to get that close, you can get that close and you can just tap away. Um, it doesn't take a lot of effort. It doesn't take a lot of time. It's very, very simple. Um, just in 10 minutes, we can knock out this entire photo and you can be totally good and send it off to the client. Um, if your color was already good and the lighting was great and whatever. This technique works both inside and outdoors if you're shooting remote locations or if you're shooting in the studio. Same thing, doesn't make a difference. Um, but that's really it guys. That's kind of the only technique I wanted to show you on iPad. Uh, just so that you guys know this is possible. Um, and when it comes to doing editorial or beauty or fashion work, like this can still give you the same level of results. Um, granted, since I am editing on iPad, it's not gonna be the high quality that you would expect on you know, a pro level desktop or, or laptop situation with an external monitor. It's not gonna be as good as that, but if you're posting online, it's, I mean, dude, like you're cool, man. You are good, uh, you are totally fine. But that's kind of we're gonna wrap up today's video. I, I hope that technique was beneficial for you guys. I hope you kind of learned something. Um, especially on iPad for you guys that have an iPad Pro already, might as well whip it out, man, and, and start editing on the go. You can just, you don't have to bring around the laptop anymore. You don't have to bring around the, the tablet and, and, and all that stuff and the stylus and have all these cables. You don't have to do that, any of that stuff anymore. You can literally just have your iPad and just an Apple Pencil and you're cool, man. Like you are totally fine. So I hope that helps you guys.